The loft command can be one of the most complex in BricsCAD for creating 3D shapes. It's most commonly seen on the cover of a mouse where you have the top of it curving in two different directions at the same time. A simple loft consists of two entities which I'm going to make from a square and a circle. So let's first use the rectangle command and then enter S for the square option. There's the square. And now I'll use the elev command to change the elevation to one foot and draw a circle. Sizes really don't matter. There you go. So now start the loft command, which you can start by either going to the solid tab and then choosing loft or else doing as I did, enter it at the command prompt. So it's saying select cross section lofting order. That's important because it gets drawn in the way you select the entities. So let me first draw, select the square, second circle, press enter, enter. And now when we look at it in 3D, we see that the square slowly and smoothly transitions to the circle. Loft command has the ability to make beautiful smooth curves, creating complex shapes out of simple 2D elements. So here I've drawn three ellipses, and now I'm going to put them on a different elevation. So let me switch to an isometric view and zoom back a bit. So we'll leave the first one at zero, put the second one at a height of six, and you can see that I am uh, changing the value of the Z coordinate. That's like changing the elevation for it. And we'll put this one to an elevation of nine inches. Zoom extents, there's our three. Now let's start the loft command. Click loft and then choose them in the correct order. And as you do, you can see that BricsCAD is previewing what it will look like. And then pick the third one. Press enter a couple times to end the command and then orbit the shape to see what it looks like. And that could be, oh, I don't know, the, the keel of a boat or uh, the wing of an airplane, but uh, that's how easily you can create such a magnificent looking shape. Lofting also works between faces of 3D objects. So I'm going to select this face and this face and you can see that the command produces this preview press enter to get into the options portion we're going to type s for settings one of the things we can do is change the normal normal is mathematics talk for 90 degrees or perpendicular so let's enter the normal option and the best way to explain it is to show it i select both meaning both ends and you can see now how the loft starts at 90 degrees perpendicular to the face and then quickly goes into its curve so that it can meet the other end also at 90 degrees. Normal is a shortcut. So if we go into uh, draft angles, draft angles is the angle at which the loft begins at its starting point and ends at its ending point. So here if we type in 1A, we can specify a different kind of angle. Let's do something more extreme, like 150 degrees. And you can see how over here the loft curves in dramatically and then carries on. Now let's uh, change 1A to a small angle like 15 degrees. And you can see it bulging out. If I rotate it around, you can see underneath how it bulges out before once again connecting at the other end. The loft that results is an independent entity and so you can copy it and place it elsewhere in the drawing for you to use as you like. While the loft command normally generate curved surfaces that go in two different directions, you can also control how those directions go through guideline. Here I've drawn cross-section lines in black. Uh, these are elliptical arcs. And then I drew these guidelines in red to be able to distinguish them. And those are splines that I attach to the cross section with the nearest object snap. Enter the loft command and I'll select the three cross sections. And you can see what it looks like. And then we enter G for the uh, guides option that lets us specify the 
guide curves. So there's one, and you can see it has already changed its shape. So we'll choose a few, the rest of them as the sides bulge out.